This video is slightly different, being that it's a spearfishing video, and typically I'm fishing. I'm sort of a beginner when it comes to spearfishing. I'm a pretty good free diver. I've been diving and snorkeling almost my whole life, living five minutes away from the beach in South Florida. I think that really helps me when it comes to spearfishing because you've got to have a good foundational base of free diving if you want to free dive while spearfishing. You can also scuba dive, but I think free diving is a lot more rewarding and challenging. And it's a lot more fun too. You don't have to deal with all the scuba gear and all that kind of stuff. Other thing, I'm used to being from Florida, going to the Bahamas and, and the Keys, I'm used to clear blue water. <laughs> I am not used to this Louisiana, Gulf of Mexico slash Mississippi River murky water. And in those clips, you could see how murky the water was for a little bit and that was a clear day so you can tell you know I'm not used to first of all diving off of rigs or spearfishing off of rigs either you've got to be really quick once you shoot the fish to grab them in really quick because he'll shoot right out of the rig and then you'll your line will get stuck in the rig you can see that Lewis had to help me a lot pull it back I had to kind of build that response and learn that reaction real quick to just pull. So I'm working on it. I hope you guys enjoyed my little spear fishing clips. Now I'm going to bring that triple tail into my kitchen today and cook it for you. In Louisiana, there's a, a tradition to eat red beans and rice on Mondays. I know it's a Louisiana thing. I'm not sure if it's like that in any of the other states. It's not really like that in Florida. So uh, it's kind of a new thing for me. Another thing is I'm gonna do a little bit of my own twist on a red, uh, on a traditional red beans and rice recipe today. Typically you've got a white rice. Today I'm gonna be using quinoa. Also you've got sausage in the red beans and rice, which I'm not gonna use sausage today. I'm gonna swap that for triple tail. And I don't have regular red beans. There is a difference between kidney beans and red beans. It's okay, it's all good. So I'm doing a little a few swaps. I also don't have a few ingredients. You're supposed to have a green bell pepper, but I have a yellow one, you know, stuff like that. So I'm gonna put an ingredient list right here so you can take a little screenshot of that and go get your groceries, get your ingredients all together so you can make this recipe too if you want. So in the last video, you got to watch me catch and clean the triple tail. You could see it's a pretty difficult fish to fillet. It's tough. They've got those 
big thick scales, all those spines, the sharp gill plates. It's just, you gotta have a sharp, strong knife and you gotta be strong and really uh, get your, put your muscle into filleting these fish. So if you haven't checked that video out, go ahead and uh, check it right up there. I'll put the link in the description box below so you can watch that first if you're interested in, in how to clean it. Also, I'm really surprised at how many people don't know what a triple tail is or who have never heard of a triple tail before. The first triple tail I ever caught was actually in my backyard uh, on, you know, on a canal, we lived on a canal, and I caught a triple tail in a bucket this big and it was um, yellow. The juvenile ones are yellow and they float around on the surface of the water, look just like dead leaves in the water. It's like really, in Florida, I've never seen them any bigger than, you know, you know? So here it's like they're Jurassic monster triple tail and they're really fun to catch and target out of Venice here. A lot of times I'll hear Lewis on the phone with clients talking about going triple tail fishing and they're like, huh, triple tail, what is that? I'm like, I'm like shocked because it's such an excellent fish, not only to catch, but they're so delicious. I also get a lot of people commenting how it's their favorite fish to eat. So it's delicious, fun to catch. Every time I go to, I, I get one, I, I'm nervous. Like my heart's pounding. It's just so exciting. I just wanted to go over some of those things with you real quick before I get started. Let's get going. I'm gonna start with my quinoa, cook my quinoa, chop up all my vegetables and stuff, drain and rinse my beans, get the pans all going. I, I need garlic vegetable broth as well. I'm using chicken flavored bone broth, which has a lot of nutritional benefits if you don't know what bone broth is. Find a little link for some info about it in the description box below. I like to cook things that are healthy, things that have added nutritional benefits. I don't like to use a lot of processed foods, bad bad fattening foods. I really like healthy, so if you, if you like to eat healthy as well, or if you really want to start eating healthy, I've got a whole playlist of recipe, catch, clean, cook videos on my YouTube channel and I guarantee you all of them are healthy. Okay, so I have my onions and pepper chopped. I've got my quinoa nice and fluffy. My red beans or my kidney beans. I'm just gonna get my onions and bell peppers going. I'm gonna use a little bit of cooking oil spray on the pan too, just in case. Woo, around. So let those cook for about five minutes. Okay, I think I'm ready to stir in my garlic. Ooh, lots of garlic. All right, so after I cover it, I'm gonna lower it to like a medium low heat and let it just cook for 10 minutes. So we'll check back with this in about 10 minutes. This has been sitting for about 10 minutes. It smells really good. Now I'm going to add my quinoa and all the seasonings that you're supposed to add. Oh yeah, this looks good. Okay, so now, I have my fillets. I have a pan here with some butter in it. And I'm gonna put on medium high heat. And then I'm also gonna add some garlic once the butter melts a little bit. My butter is nicely melted. Nicely melted in here on this pan on medium high heat. I added my garlic just a little bit. And then I added a little bit of garlic powder on my fillets. I learned something about cooking fish. Most of the time you'll see the directions or the instructions tell you to cook the fish until it flakes easily with a fork. That's not what you wanna do. First of all, when you flake it with a fork, you're kind of uh, breaking it all up. You're not, it's not pretty anymore. You wanna serve it you know, in a nice, pretty piece. So you wanna get like a toothpick or something like similar to this that you can gently poke into the meat and if you feel any kind of resistance, like a rubbery feeling or like your toothpick stops, that means it's not done cooking. So that way you don't mess up your fish by flaking it apart with a fork. And it's a better way to just kind of make sure it's done. If it goes in smoothly and it comes out, it's done. Okay, so I'm, I'm using my thing now just to kind of get a feel for what it feels like. 
and it's really easy to poke in parts that are done. They go right through. They slide right through, comes right out. But then the parts that are not finished, you can kind of tell it has like a rubbery, like hard feeling. And then you poke all these little holes and you don't even see it. This one's almost done. All my fillets are done. They look really good. It smells even better. Now I'm ready to put it all together and eat it. This is what it looks like. It's beautiful. I'm gonna taste it. Definitely does not look like traditional red beans and rice, but I made it completely different. So. Mm. Wow, it's really good. <laughs> it's way better than I thought it was gonna be. It's actually really good. Yeah. I was kind of worried, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> really good and if I did make it with sausage like a regular red beans and rice re recipe that would also be really good too maybe I'll do it with like can we make it get some deer sausage made yeah that'd be good I don't know mm. I mean, how many deer did you kill I don't know yet <laughs> <laughs> you gotta kill the deer to get the sausage I might made. find out fish is like as usual, it's delicious. And I barely seasoned it or added anything. It doesn't need much. Butter and garlic and salt and pepper. It's so good. And it does taste really refreshing and healthy too. In a good way. So, if I was gonna compare this fish to another fish, I would say it's similar to like a snapper, like a red snapper, like a mutton snapper. Not grouper. What would you compare triple tail to? Right, snapper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, similar to me. They're both about Oh, it's there. so good. I may have overcooked it just a little bit. I think it's better to undercook your fish because when you take it off the pan, it still cooks itself. But it's still really good and juicy. Mmm. I'll make this again. So I'm done, I'm gonna finish this up. Hope you guys enjoy this video. I really hope you get a chance to try this recipe. It is really good. Even if you wanna do, if you don't have fresh fish, I would go ahead and get some sausage and put that with it too. It's really good. Enjoy your Monday, enjoy your red beans and rice. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button because I'd love to have you here. Hit the like button because it really supports my channel. And I'll see you guys in my next video.